this series called Doing Justice. And this morning, I want to share a message titled, Why Do Justice? And you all are probably sitting there thinking, what does Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 through 30 got to do with justice? But here you find the picture of justice painted on the story of creation itself. It says, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the create creatures that move along the ground. And these words we find are call to justice. Well, watch this. God's image was stamped in us. And it's not about our character or our morality. But what it's about, it's about authority. In other words, we are to be stewards over creation. We were created to uphold the righteous balance that was crafted by none other than God himself. And to do justice simply means to live out this God given mandate. As the image bearers of God, the, the authority that goes along with this mandate, the authority that comes with it, 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 it's responsibility that comes along with it, that comes along with this mandate. You see, in God's kingdom, we don't use authority to lord over others. Instead, it's a call to serve. Instead, it's a call to protect. Instead, it's a call to uphold the dignity of all life. In other words, to do justice is to engage in the maintaining and restoring of God's intended peace and equity in his creation. Let's look at, if you will, verse 28. It says, and God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over all the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. The heart of God's blessing is found in human flourishing. The, the, the heart of God's blessing is found in human flourishing. Not just for me. Not just for some, but for all mankind. And, and, and this flourishing is not rooted in self-concerned prosperity. Some of y'all ain't going to like this, but I'm going to say it anyway. It, it, it hinges on communal prosperity because self-centered prosperity, what it does is it challenges the biblical understanding of wealth and poverty. The Bible never assures health and wealth like we think for Jesus' followers in this life. And then what it does is it promotes a transactional understanding of our relationship with God. It reduces God to a divine ATM machine that, dispense, that, that dispenses blessings in return for faith. Self-centered prosperity could lead to 
victim blaming. You, you see, if, if, if health and wealth are seen as signs of God's favor, then sickness and poverty can be mistakenly interpreted for signs of a lack of faith or hidden sin. You know, I, I grew up like that. And lastly, self-centered prosperity can produce materialism and selfishness. You see, if, if, if people see wealth as a sign of God's blessing and fail to understand the biblical call to stewardship and generosity, they become consumed with getting more and controlling resources rather than using them to serve others. I, I, I wish to God we would stop the individualistic ideologies as Jesus followers. I come to church to get my blessing. No, it's a blessing here for everybody. Uh, 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 a personal walk with God. No, it's a communal walk. You were not meant to do this alone. It hinges on justice. Everything hinges on justice. Justice is the core essence of our calling, and it transcends mere legality. It's about living in right relationship with God. It's about living in right relationship with one another, and it's about living in right relationship with all of God's creation. Justice, you see, it's not about imposing punishment, but it's about promoting healing and restoration. It involves the harmony of our communities and our inner selves with the ideals that God envisioned. In, in verses 29 and 30, God gives every seed-bearing plant for food, both to humans and, and animals. And, and what this does is it embodies the essence of divine generosity, nurturing coexistence and offering widespread care for all beings. It's given to each what they need, watch this, ensuring that every part of creation flourishes. Family, as followers of Jesus, doing justice is not an addition to our faith. Do, doing justice links us to the essence of our identity as God's image bearers. Why do justice, you may ask? When we do justice, uh, or, or, or because we engage justice, because we reflect the just one. We pursue equity and fairness because these principles are deeply rooted in the nature of our creator and in our savior, Jesus. And following Jesus compels us to do justice. Our, our faith in him is it's not just a personal spiritual affair. It's a commitment to actively engage with the world in ways that mirror God's justice and love. Jesus, what he does is he invites us to be his hands and feet, carrying this mission to do justice, carrying this mission to love kindness, and carrying this mission to walk humbly with our God. So doing justice is our Jesus-like response to our broken world. It's an embodiment 
of his love. It's an aspect of discipleship and a foretaste of his coming kingdom. The cross now becomes the foundation in our pursuit of justice. It, it becomes our foundation in the pursuit of justice because since Jesus endured the ultimate injustice to ensure divine justice, we too are called to seek justice in the world. We are to challenge systems of oppression. We are to work towards fairness and equity. And we are to be driven by the reconciling love displayed on the cross. As people who have been blessed by the justice of the cross, it's only fitting that we become agents of justice in the world. The justice of God expressed in the death of Jesus on the cross, what it does is it provides a model. It provides motivation and it provides a mandate. It provides a mandate for us to faithfully do justice in our lives and in our communities. It calls us to reflect his justice. It calls us to reflect his, and, and it calls us to reflect his justice in how we love and how we live and how we seek fairness and how we promote dignity and how we uphold the rights of the marginalized, the marginalized and oppressed. In closing, let me, let me say this. To do justice is not optional. It's, it's not a detour on the path of faith, but it is the journey. It's the path that Jesus walked through. It's the path that Jesus walked through his parables. It's the path that Jesus walked through his healing. It's the path that Jesus walked through the cross and through his resurrection. And in light of God's grace demonstrated on the cross and in the understanding that the great worth he places on us and as his image bearers, let us walk in the pursuit of justice. Don't be driven by self-centered prosperity. Uh, let, me, let, let me make it plain, the prosperity gospel. But by selfless prosperity of all God's creation. Because it's not about faithfully proclaiming our faith. It's also important to faithfully practice our faith. This dead world needs to be resurrected. And it needs to be resurrected by justice-driven image bearers that not only embody love, but that champion dignity and cultivate hope. So let's go out there. Let's do justice. The cross-bearing type of justice. The tomb emptying type of justice, the kingdom advancing type of justice for the sake of this world that needs restoration and in the hope of a kingdom that has not yet come. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you, God, that You are a just God. And Lord, as bearers of your image, we are called to do justice. Lord, we're called to do that cross-bearing, tomb-emptying, kingdom-advancing kind of justice. 
And dear God, we pray that you would help us. Help us to live out the mandate to be good stewards over all creation. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. And Lord, we pray for those that don't know you this morning. We pray, God, that something was said that they got a proper introduction to you. And Holy Spirit, we pray that you would do your regenerating work now and exchange that heart of stone for a heart of flesh. In Jesus' name. Save them now in the stillness and quietness of their heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for those of us that know you. Lord, we pray that something was said that we will be brighter lights and we will be saltier salt. That your image would reflect so in us that people would come asking, what must I do that I might be saved? Thank you, Lord, for hearing us this morning. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Communion is a sacred act where we remember Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. And we anticipate his coming kingdom. And this act anchors us in the heart of divine justice. When we eat the bread symbolizing Jesus' broken body and drink the juice representing his shed blood, we are constantly reminded of the extreme lengths God went through to restore us to justice. Reconciling humanity to himself through Jesus. We're going to ask Pastor Kyle to come up and help me this morning. So friends, Jesus gave us this meal. It's his, his shoes, his path, his way that we walk in. And when he gave us this meal, he gave it to his disciples on the night that he was betrayed. And he took a piece of bread. And as he blessed it, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this every time you eat it in remembrance of me. And after that, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. I want you to drink all of it. And they did drink together. And as often as we eat the bread and drink the cup, we do publicly proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. So if that is something you could proclaim for yourself, if Jesus' way is a way that you walk in, you do not have to be a perfect person to sit at his table. All of us have failed the call to do justice in our public lives and in our personal lives from time to time in various ways. But that's why he died, yeah. so that we could always have a fresh start, so that we could start again today and tomorrow and tomorrow. So if that's you, welcome to the table. If that's not you or you wouldn't, say that you, you, you follow Jesus or that you've embraced his death and resurrection for your own life with God, well, first, we just want to say thank you for coming and being here with us. We're so glad that you're here and that you're journeying toward God with us. And we just want to invite you to do that in a way that's authentic for where you're at. That wouldn't be taking this meal because by taking it, that's what we're saying. But we'd encourage you to maybe reflect on what was said in the sermon or stay in your seat, say a prayer to God or, or sing along with the worship team. You can even come up if you want and just put your hands across your chest and receive a blessing from me or Pastor Bernard. But this is a time for all of us to commune with God wherever we're at. So if you are going to receive the elements with us, you can just come down the center aisle at any point in time during the song. There's no particular order. And you can receive one of the pieces of bread in the white tray and a cup of juice and take it back to your seat through the outside aisles. Take it any time you want during the song. Friends, these are the gifts of God. For the people of God. Spirit of God. Gathered at the highest throne, welcomed by a melody, an anthem I have always known. 
a song that's always been in me. All glory and honor, dominion and power to you. A million angels fall face down on the floor. All do echo holy is the Lord. My heart can't help but sing with all of heaven roar. Forever echo holy is the Lord. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. And let me pray for the food. Dear God, we thank you for the food that was prepared. Lord, we know food like this is a privilege. So, Lord, we pray that we would always be mindful to say thank you and may that break our hearts for our brothers and sisters that don't have. 